I'm gonna be honest, don't really know what I'm doing. He was often a player that I would buy on Football Manager. That's it's already a terrible reason. From Jon Snow, Matt puts Dan's wardrobe to shame. You know nothing, Jon Snow. Look at him, the cat that got the cream. Ian Taylor said it was the worst thing he'd ever seen in his life. Monk, really, he's, what's he, I know Monk. he's manager. What kind of thing is that? Gary Monk. Five out of ten. I, know, I haven't finished yet. I cannot believe Gabby had Bonner Horseshoe. That's crazy, that's isn't terrible. it? That's terrible. Yeah, we may well have lost listeners early doors again with a long, long-winded long intro. Go, shoot. Hello, welcome to the Villa View podcast with Thomas Julian and Dan Bardell. We're here to hopefully entertain all Villa fans and fans of other teams if they are listening or watching for the next 45 minutes or so. So, number 10, Tom, did you ever think that you'd make it this far? Uh, I kind of hoped I would, yeah. yeah. You know, 10... It's not a high bar, is it? You know, no, you've but, done well. I mean, if I make it through two more, I'll have made it through to the actual season. Season, which is quite exciting. Yeah, so, well, uh, including this one. If you make it through two more, are you including this one? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. My maths is better than yours. All right, then. Fine. A little, little fun thing to start. I thought, as it's episode ten, I've done some notes of ten things Tom has done well. Wow. In the podcast, so number one, dressed smart. Always. Yeah. Apart from one week. Yeah. Yep. So that's, that's been good because I've not dressed smart ever. Nope. Uh, two, turned up every week, will be a few podcasts not on time, but you've actually turned up every week, so that's another positive. That's true. I was late to, again today, but I even took a, an Uber here just to make sure that I'd be kind of on time. That shows how frightened of me that you are. <laughs> very you, much so. You've had to get an you're, Uber. You're a very intimidating man. Uh, number three, possessed a good knowledge of anything not football-based. You're welcome. Yep. Number four, tries hard. I do try hard. Like on the football pitch, I do, yeah. do give it all my all. And five, books the booth every week, because you've done that. Yep. You've done that well. You've not forgotten to do that. And I said there was going to be ten, but literally I could only think of five. <laughs> so there was not ten things, just the five things that Tom Julian has done well since the podcast began. If you can think of five more, then please do let us know in the comments below. We do like to get you involved as much as we can, especially when it is negative against Tom. I do take notes. I always yeah. have notes. I, that's, that's didn't, a, didn't make it? No, that wasn't there. I didn't include that. Didn't include that. Well, thank you for those five nice things. Better to say some nice things than none at all, I suppose. I, think I could have done five, ten, five or ten bad things. I didn't do that. Yeah. So I'm growing as you a person. You got any off the top of your head? Uh, no, not right at the so moment. So you can't even think of any. Just lightness is your main fault. But Should we get on to the yeah, villa? let's talk about villa. We've, okay. uh, we've had a couple of games since we were last on. We recorded early last week. If you remember, we were in a vault, um, which was which was horrible. So we're was glad horrible. to... Glad to see, well, I mean, it's still artificial light, but glad to see light nonetheless. It's almost like we did the podcast last week at St Andrews, and now we're back at Villa Park, the promised land in a nice, comfy, up-to-date, modern booth, it's, whereas before it was prehistoric, it was like being in St Andrews. It's a wonderful analogy, and I fully concur. Um, so you. we recorded it on Monday. Obviously, we had the game on Tuesday against Walsall, which was a, a, a fairly drab affair, oh, would you really agree? It was. I mean, I said pre-season results mean nothing but it would be nice if we could have strung more than three passes together that night that was a very dull dour affair yes uh, I tried to pick out something positive uh, strong showing again from Terry oh, he's, yeah. haven't conceded since since he joined which is great um, and I thought Henry, Lan- Henry Lansbury looked good coming deep um, a bit wasted there personally I, I like it the fact that he comes deep and, and looks to go forward again we're, we're looking for things that are, are more positive attacking wise and I, I thought he could do a nice job there. First half, he did actually spray a couple of lovely balls, long long balls, mm-hmm. really, really good precision and accuracy from Henry. So, yeah, I suppose if he's deep, he can do that. Capable I, of doing I, that. I said I was digging for something positive. It was a yeah. it was a fairly uh, torrid watch for those of you that, that went or, or tuned in on, on YouTube. Nay, now I feel trying to get those 10 things that you did well. I was <laughs> having to really dig. Yeah, I got two there. Yeah. And then I went on to second half was dull. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then we obviously had the uh, the Cup of Traditions. Champions. Uh, Aston Villa, are. champions. Uh did you see the trophy? I, mean, I did see the trophy. I watched the whole thing. The trophy was spectacular. Uh, £13? No, you, you that's can a buy replica. that trophy. Not, yeah, of course it's uh, a small right. one, but they're the, I, I definitely remember seeing those in the shop. My dad used to run our little football team, so I used really? to be able to have my two cents on what, what trophies we might get, and then he'd always pick a different one. Did you one. used to win that trophy every year because you were the manager's son? I did win the uh, manager's player of the year once. And your dad was the manager? Yeah, but it was a joint decision. Yeah. We had three coaches. You were Ale- and... like Alex Bruce <laughs> or El Amado. Well, yeah. Steve Bruce's adopted son. I mean, it's more, more Alex Bruce's reference, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but, yes, I did win. I only won it once, though, which is fairly disappointing, actually. <laughs> that is bad uh, if your dad's the manager. But then I moved to a different team anyway, so... Okay. Uh, yeah, we can move on from that. Okay. What did you think of the Cup of Traditions? 
I enjoyed it. I was, it was a bit strange having the two 45-minute games. I was a bit pensive about it to begin with, but actually it worked quite well because it gave two, like two Villa sides a 45-minute run out. It's two str- strong sides, and you know we left a few players at home so you can see the kind of makeup that Bruce wanted of the squad. And it was nice to see the young players included. I really, really enjoyed that. I'm sure we'll touch on that later. It's just nice to see us score a few goals and, and win a couple of games. Obviously, it doesn't happen very often because obviously we played Warsaw for 90 minutes. Didn't look like we were ever going to score. And then in one 45-minute game, we scored three and then the next we scored two. So that's a bit bizarre. There were yeah. some, some really positive signs. Well, especially against Hertha Berlin, who obviously finished sixth last year in the in the Bundesliga. So, to, to I mean, we talked about it last week that the results ultimately don't matter in, in pre-season, but it is the performances that you want to see and you want to see the gelling of the squad. So um, some positive to take out from it and we'll, we'll get on to a few of the players in a little bit but first of all we have a special guest who, yeah. who wants to talk specifically about one one man in the squad yeah when I was going through the running order with Dan Rollinson and Matt earlier just in a separate conversation sorry you weren't involved in that I think in we'll, that talk, chat. we'll talk about that a little bit later uh, uh, yeah I mentioned that I wanted to talk about Gabby because obviously he played a big part in the weekend and as soon as I mentioned Gabby had name his name Matt Lynch was like pick me pick me I really want to come on so we're going to let him Come on, come on the podcast. It has been planned for a while, but we weren't sure how we were going to facilitate it. But now I believe in what's probably going to go wrong, it's, trying, to, trying to do it, we're going to try and get Matt on. It's a historic moment for the podcast, trying, yeah, to, do, go. trying to do a phone. And go on, you try and get him on the line. This is going to go one of two ways. This is a quite exciting time for all of us in the studio here. Obviously, you can see that we do try to keep this as live. This is where he probably doesn't answer. Matt Lynch, you're on the Villa View podcast. All your dreams are coming true, Matt. I know, it's finally happened, hasn't it? It's taken so long, but I'm finally on a podcast. How do you feel? How, what, are the, what are the emotions, the nerves? How, how are you feeling right now? Uh, the nerves are all over the place. It's so emotional. It's been an emotional journey to finally get on it. Are you more nervous doing the podcast or more nervous stepping up at Villa Park to take a penalty <laughs> knowing your bad record? Oh, it's got to be Villa Park. I'm used to audio. I'm a natural at audio. I'm not a natural at penalties. Well, we'll, we'll see th- about that. This can't go any worse than the, than the Villa Park penalty, Matt. So uh, just, to, just to allay your fears there. So, Roy, you want to come on because you want to talk about Gabby Abon Lahore. You've obviously been very critical of Abon Lahore in the past, especially 12 months ago. Where do you stand with him now? Obviously seeing what he's done in pre-season so far. Um, first of all, seeing what he's done in pre-season, he's done nothing so far, to be honest. Um, I don't see the big fuss over Gab back as the thing has gone round. I don't see it whatsoever. I don't see the fact that he's done nothing different to any other summer, to be honest. He's gone out there and got himself fit, but it's about the progression from that point. And for me, I, I'm fed up with it. It's the same old story every summer. And by come November... We'll be in probably the same position we've been in every other year with him. I'm happy to be proven wrong with him, happy to eat humble pie with him, but I can't see it actually going any better than it's gone in recent years with him, sadly. And I know that people say, oh, you're slagging him off this right and centre. He's done good to get back to where he is. But he's a professional footballer in the end of the day, and I've seen nothing professional about that guy for about six years. Do you not think that he's done... OK, he's done bad. I, I know that, you know that. Every Villa fan will know he's done some terrible terrible things and let himself down badly but on the other hand as well he's also provided Villa fans with a lot of good memories over the past 13 or so seasons so do you not kind of think they balance each other out and that now you should be getting behind him? I'm always behind him I'll always back him but I'm just saying that from a fan perspective I don't think that he's actually going to do any good to be honest um, for us when he's restricting chances is what I'm saying is Russian Hepburn Murphy is in there in the reserves Keenan Davis, these guys deserve an opportunity now. The, the opportunity that Gabby got given at Everton uh, in what year was it? 2005, I want to say, 2006, that sort of time. That's when Gabby had his chance from Arsenal O'Neill as a young lad to get his chance and get his debut, and he snatched it and he went from there. And I do think that now it's the time for somebody like Russian Hepper Murphy to do the same and get the opportunity to do what Gabby did when he first came into the team rustle a few feathers and I'll always back Gabby don't get me wrong I'll always back him but for me the road's over Matt him. Matt do you think um, he's obviously out of contract at the end of, end of next year do you think he's got a role to play in bringing those younger players through is that where his he could be a real advantage to the squad or do you think he's just kind of just should be outcasted at this point 
you, you can't really outcast anybody because that causes more problems than it's worth, in fairness. I don't think you can outcast too many players. It creates a friction in the squad, to be honest. And it's no disrespect to Gabby, but I don't know if he's the best role model, in fairness, for these young guys coming through. Um, I don't. I can't imagine rushing Hepper Murphy turning around and going, I want to be like Gabby in 10 years' time. I, I can't see that, in fairness. And you say about the role model, he's good for sort of saying, this is what not to do, perhaps. And to be honest, yeah, I, the, perhaps I'm being a bit disrespectful for the goals that he scored for us. But then I think that I'm still hurt from the last few years and how he went missing. And if you go missing like that, it's, it's unacceptable in any industry, let alone if you're a professional footballer. And I, I think I expected more from him, even in the last year, in the past season when he was outcast from Roberto Di Matteo and then told to get fit. You know, that's eight months ago or so that he was unfit still. And even now we're looking at it and we're going, well, he's still going to be, what, fourth choice striker, fifth choice striker, perhaps third, third, third choice striker. You know, I'm just a bit disappointed that it's going to restrict chances for other players because to me, it's a Bruce Ego trip to bring Gabby back into the fold. And perhaps he could offer us something in the next year, but then I think it, it's a big gamble and I'd rather take the gamble on rushing Hepburn Murphy than Gabby Bonghall. Dan, thoughts? I think perhaps being a little bit bit harsh. Do you not, do you not, do you not think he looks a lot leaner, like lean as in he did in the Martin O'Neill days now? He does, yeah, but it's a case of can he roll it back? Um, yeah, he scored a few in pre-season, but it it doesn't take much as a professional footballer to hopefully score against the non-league side, in fairness, does it? Um, to be honest, or so you'd hope. And yeah, he does look a lot fitter and fair play to him for going out there and being fit. But then I think that's his job, to be fit. And if he can do that, that's part of the way there. It's just a, the fact that he's got to try and claw back this reputation, not amongst from just me. I'm sure there's many fans that probably hold the same viewpoint as me, that it's time to sort of him to sort of let go as such and let other players have that opportunity because he's restricting a place in that squad and perhaps he could offer us something in the next season. But in the same vein, I'm... I'm ever the sceptic with him, to be honest. And I'll always respect him and always, I'll always back him, but I don't think he can do it personally. I think you might be surprised this season. I've got a sneaky feeling he, he actually means business because it's the first time he's ever had something to play for for at least maybe 10 years now. He's playing for his future. If he doesn't do it this season, and even if he does do it, there's no guarantees of a of a new contract for him. I'd argue it's we're better off staying at heat for him Villa staying in the Championship means he's got more of a future of Villa. If we go up, I don't think there's any way we give him a new contract because I don't think he's proven he can do it at Premier League level for for a long time now. But at Championship, I still think he should, should score a lot of goals if he stays fit. And that's my main issue with him, is that he, he can't stay fit. Forget his, his weight and all that jazz. I actually don't think he can stay fit. He gets a lot of niggles all the time. He misses a lot of games through injury. Yeah, I'm happy to hit humble pie. To be honest, I'd, I'd love him to go and score 15 goals in the next season. You know, I'd love, love, love nothing more than him to do that, especially if it helped us towards promotion. And he is playing for something. But then surely he's been playing for something for the last 10 years, playing for the pride of the Aston Villa shirt as a Villa fan. He's playing for that shirt. And surely that's enough for him rather than, as you say, Dan, having to play for a contract. Surely that playing for Aston Villa and playing for that boyhood club should spur him on enough. Yeah, it should do, but I'm sure, really, at the end of the day, being a footballer is 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 a job. So he was comfortable with what with what he was earning. There's no there's no excuses for for what he's done, but I do think there's been some circumstances. Villa hasn't been well run in general. I was going to say, I think again, like Dan says, there, there's no excuses when you're a Premier League footballer. You have to give the best of your ability at, at all times. But he's been in a team which has been kind of in transition for for a little while and, and those might know Neil Day feel quite heady now don't they uh, but he was in a, a much much better more stable team then and, and he's he's. I suppose he's supposed to have become a leader in this team and, and maybe that's just not who he is as a, as a person and as a, a personality he's not a captain he's never been a captain he gets given the armband but he isn't the character to be a captain and he, he said himself he doesn't deserve to ever be captain again but Bruce has obviously seen fit to give him the armband for a few games in pre-season but I think that's just a way mm. of motivating him to be honest Matt I wanted to ask you um, who who else you'd seen in pre-season maybe on the positive side of the scale who you'd, who you'd liked uh, this pre-season so far yeah I, Jordan Marvey to be honest I think that it's a good example of 
how to react if something doesn't go your way. Um, looks moments away from joining Sevilla and leaving Aston Villa. The next minute he's playing against Warsaw and whatever else. You know, that's some difference. And I must admit, I think he's handled it admirably, to be honest. And I'll always respect him for the way he's dealt with that. And whatever comes for him, I respect for what he's done. And to be honest, he's been okay in pre-season so far. He's looked a lot better than he was last season. That's for sure. And there's this slight bit of me that's hoping we can keep hold of him because I know he's got that ability still. And there's that slight bit of me that's hoping we can keep hold of him because of the whole severe thing. But yeah, massive respect for him. On the other scale, in terms of youth players, I think that Doyle Hayes has really come into the fold and looked a man above his age, to be honest, on that football pitch. The way he's sort of looking to link up with players and create stuff, he's looked really good. And then Andre Green as well. He looks like a man on a mission. Yeah, Andre Green for me. In fact, a few of the younger players, especially in this tour, um, uh, the Germany tour, it's been it's been really good and really positive to see a few of these young guys. And we'll come on to it a little bit later. But uh, yeah, Amavi's a great example, isn't he, Dan? Of somebody that you can, well, like like Matt said, there has faced a little bit of adversity this this uh, preseason, but is is playing for a place in some team, whether it's the Villa team or somewhere else. Yeah, I think he's done well. He's obviously shown good resilience. He could have gone and hid, gone and sulked, and he hasn't done any, any of those things. And I'm like, Matt, now I hope hope he stays because there is there is a good player there. And I think now we've got the money for Berry too. Perhaps maybe the need to shift him isn't as severe. Severe, Sevilla, <laughs> however you say it. Well, yeah. well, isn't as severe as it was before. So for me, if we keep him, that's two good left-backs we've got and two different left-backs, one that's good going forward and one that's go good defensively. And I think actually having a pre-season this season for Amava will be a benefit because he didn't really get one last time and maybe that's why he hit a bit of a slump in form because I think if you get a good pre-season behind you, it sets you up for the season. And if you don't, I think you're always going to run into trouble at some point. Absolutely. Right, we're going to let you go, Matt. We're going to continue with our podcast, but it's been a pleasure to have you on. And we're obviously now we know it works. We'll get you on again. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for letting me on today. I feel honoured. I'll... Uh, I'll <laughs> We'll let the we'll let people comment on whether they'd like to like to see you again. I'm sure sure they would like to have you on the podcast again. So have a good night, and I'll speak to you soon. See you. Bye. Bye. Cheers, Matt. Lynch out. Lynch He's out. Gone. Well, yeah. that that worked better than I thought it was going to work. It really did. I was waiting for that to be a technical disaster, but yeah. alas, it wasn't. Every uh, every hurdle that's put in front of us, Dan, we uh, we rise above it. Yeah, we've negotiated that well. I thought he was a bit harsh on Gabby, actually. I was like, I thought he may have come round a little bit, but he uh, he has not at all. Yeah, the way you sold that to me before was like I thought there was going to be more positivity there. Oh, I did too. Um, and kind of the question I asked Matt there was, what do you do with a player like Gabby if you don't want him in the team? Because, like he says, outcasting him is not the no. answer. But yet you have to manage that ego in a in a in a football squad and a team. It's a team game, you know. And there might be a point like there was last year against Birmingham where you need a player like Gabby Agbon Lahore. Yeah. Um, so you've got to keep him around. You've got to keep him happy. How you manage that squad is is how Bruce earns his money at the end of the day. If he's hungry in a good way, like he is at the, at the moment, and he's making a positive contribution, which he looks like he is and he's capable of doing this time around because he does look so much better and fitter than he has done in a long time, then I see no problem in keeping him around because if you do alienate him, it's just going to cause problems because he's got a lot of allies at Aston Villa Football Club. He's the longest-serving player. Jack Grealish talks about him like he's the best thing since sliced bread, really, yeah. looks up, really looks up to him. So immediately you're alienating yourself if you if you get rid of Agbon Lahore. An ideal scenario for me is that he has a good season, injury-free, and he gets to, he gets to that contract ends, he's had a good season, and he gets to bow out on a high... If he'd have actually bowed out on, on the, the way it's been the last few years, I, I don't think that would have been fair. I don't think that would have been satisfying because, as I say, he has provided Villa fans with a lot of happy memories. And as much as he's done bad things for me, you have to try and remember the good things as well. And he's done a lot of good things. Yeah, I'm interested to see what happens with him next year because he is only 30, 31, I think. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think that he, he, as a professional, will probably think if it's the end of the road at Villa, that'd be a really sad day for him who's He's played all his career there. But yet he still probably think that he'll have three or four years in the tank left. Um, so it'll be quite interesting to see what happens with him this season, but but obviously further further along the line as well. Stories I've heard about him as well. Off the pitch, he seems to be a very nice guy. Who has, when fans run into him, I know that he has a lot of time mm. for the fans. I mean, he's probably stayed clear of him the last few years for fear of being attacked after, after all, all that's happened. But he's always had a pretty good relationship with the fans. I think he's always been quite accessible 
to fans. So I want him to do well. And obviously, whoever's wearing the shirt next season, we must get behind them because Aston Villa has to go up yep. next season. If, if we don't, we're in big trouble. Yeah, well, he grabbed a goal against Hertha Berlin, didn't he? Um, there was supposed to be one more game for Villa uh, on their little tour of Germany. Obviously, Cup of Tradition champions, but the game against Armenia Bielefeld has been called off. I'm glad you had to say their name and not me, because I would not have got that out. My wife's German. That's uh, that's not too far. Is your wife German? Oh, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, her mum's German. What's her maiden name? Her, her mum's maiden name is Kubler. Kubler. Yeah. Nice name. Yeah. Lovely, yeah. lovely part of the world. Yeah. Um, so that game has been called off due to a waterlogged pitch. Yeah. Uh, I think some of the senior guys are going to get a run out uh, against Tamworth. Uh, it was supposed to be an under 23s game, uh, but I think a few of the few of the senior players are going to play in that one as oh, well. I'd imagine Grealish will play because he's mm-hmm. late back to pre-season. When's Bakuna back? He's not coming back yet, is he? Uh, he must be coming back soon, yeah. We've uh, we've talked terribly about, yeah, about his game, team yeah. before. So We've not uh, seen Yedinak yet either, have we? No. No, no that's true. Uh, one player that we will see against Tamworth, if you're tuning into the under-23s game, is Russian Hepburn Murphy. He played earlier today. Came off the bench, didn't he? And yeah, scored. and yeah. scored against QPR at a game at Bodymore Heath, somewhere you're now familiar with. Um, so he's come, come back from a, from a hamstring injury be great to see him get more minutes and uh, and hopefully this is the year that he kicks on yeah I was quite interested to see Lydon was playing in that game as well because it's quite notable to me that he wasn't taken to Germany yet mm-hmm. young uh, I forgot, completely forgot his name Jake, Jake Doyle Do- Jake Doyle Haynes is it yeah. or Haynes so he got he got taken obviously he's come from nowhere yeah. really I mean I knew a little bit about about him but not, not much but he's come from nowhere oh Unprofessionalism oh, of just... the highest order in the podcast. <laughs> Tom Julian has left his phone on, and that is a disgrace. Are you going to write that down? Well, That's definitely going to dock me a point. That is it? an absolute disgrace, and you've made me lose my flow. Oh, sorry. What I was trying to say, but anyway, Jack Doyle has. Yeah, he's come from come from nowhere, and now looks like he's ahead yep. of Lydon in the pecking order. Callum but, Ahare as well. Yeah, he looked uh, good. Yeah, he, he did, impressed didn't he? me. And a this lot. is this is one of the one of the comments that we often get on the Villa View and the Villa View podcast as well is. Are we just buying old players? Is Villa a retirement home? Paddy Power made a little joke of it. I don't oh, know if you... I yeah. got sent that a lot. They're hilarious, aren't yeah, they? Very, Power? very, Jesus. very funny. Um, is Villa Park a retirement home for these players? And we've got so many good young players. I think Matt's point is is valid, isn't it, about Gabby taking a place in the, in the squad there that could be an opportunity for a young player to come in. Um, but we, we need these players now knocking on the door, really showing what they can do. I remember Gabby... Being absolutely electric, and, and Premier League defenders being really scared of his pace. Yeah, um, and we need that fear <laughs> from from other defenders now, f- from these players coming through, and they really need to show these are the opportunities that they get, and Watford as well this weekend that they'll they'll have to really make their case for a place in the f- senior squad rather than the under 23s I was actually really encouraged by Dr. Tony's tweet about his, his and Steve Bruce's decision about the fact that they'd decided to have a squad of 18 to 20 and then fill the rest out with youngsters. I think that's really, really encouraging and shows that we're trying to do things the right way. Because, OK, we've brought in a few players in the 30s, but Bruce obviously knows this league and thinks in some games that's what we need. But there's nothing wrong with having a bit of youthful exuberance mm. around as well. I'm really encouraged to see the likes of McCurdy, uh, completely forgot, is it O'Hare? O'Hare, Dull Hayes. Dull Hayes. I'm really encouraged to see them evolve. Now, they didn't look out of place. With the, senior, with the senior team the other day. So I think that's really, really encouraging. I think that's the right way to do things as well. You should supplement the squad with youth players, and that's something we haven't done over the last few years. I mean, Paul Lambert notoriously ignored our Next Generation Cup winning side, and that was an absolute disaster. We were buying people like Jordan Bowery when we had someone like Callum Robinson, and people were saying, OK, Callum Robinson's playing the Championship for Preston now. But had he been utilised properly... We're in the Championship Yeah, no, no, now, no, no, but had he been utilised properly... Yeah, but I agree He'd have with developed it. at a different a different, le- a yeah. different rate, Couldn't and he might be ahead of where, where he is now, and he'd be playing for Aston Villa, the team who's come through the academy. But Lambert was just determined to ignore youth. I mean, I think before Tim Sherwood came in, Grealish was going to be off right. on loan, had Lambert, had Lambert stayed. So Paul Lambert completely messed up what could have been a very, very good young side. And I think this young t- the young lads that are coming through now, that from the games I've seen, they play football the right way. And I've seen a few people say, we, have, we often talk to the under-23s guy on Twitter, and these players play football the right way. And you could see that. You could see O'Hare, he looked a really, really good footballer, but also he looked like he really, really worked hard. Yeah. So if you've got that combination, 
we saw last season with Andre Green even just putting a young player on the pitch it, it rejuvenates the fans as well yeah there's someone to get behind so the more we can do with that the better for me and I like these young players they 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 want the ball, which is which is really exciting to see. Again, in preseason, you get a little bit more um, rope to play with. You know, you can um, you can afford to make a couple of mistakes, but you can afford to be adventurous and brave. And these these guys are looking for the ball. They're looking to play passes, um, and I think it's quite exciting. Should we talk a little bit about the players that didn't go to Germany? Yeah, um, you read my mind. Oh, perfect. Well we're, done. we're synchronized, aren't like we? Shearer and Sutter, <laughs> York and Cole. Kind of, kind of. Um, Ross McCormack, Gary Gardner, Aaron Tishbola were were three big players left at home. Um, all three linked with with other clubs. Tishbola a little bit less, perhaps. Elphick as well. Uh, Elphick obviously looks like he might be going to to Birmingham. Uh, McCormack, uh, Sunderland potentially interested in him as a replacement for Jermaine Defoe. Not sure that's a like for like replacement there uh, Gary Gardner also been linked with Nottingham Forest I said last week about Gardner didn't know that I think he probably needs a move to rejuvenate his career, his career. and to me I think injuries have killed him mm. more than anything he looked a proper proper player Gardner and injuries have just completely curtailed him and I think they've actually changed his game because he used to be more of a box to box midfielder scored a lot of goals but I think injuries have turned him into more of a deep lying lying midfielder now and I think it's the right time for him to go and I think the thing that encouraged me about that is it would have been safe for Villa to keep him as a squad player but we've shown a bit of ruth, ruthfulness is that what's the word? Ruthlessness Ruthlessness Yep. God, terrible Ruthlessness to, to, to cull him really and he's not a bad lad Gardner good servant to Villa clearly loves the club but I think it's the time is right for him to go and his place can now go to so maybe Doyle House I can't say his name. That's Doyle right, Hales. you got it. And, uh, Doyle Hayes. Or, or Lydon. Maybe Trust yourself. He can go to them. Jake, we'll call him. Okay. He can go to young Jake or young Jordan. Yeah, that, that's um, that's another one, isn't it, where um, you're looking for, for your young players to come through and, and Gary Gardner maybe didn't quite get his chance because of those injuries. Uh, one, uh, Ross McCormack obviously didn't really impress me in our uh, domestic pre-season games um, Scott Hogan obviously took his chance with a couple of goals in Germany um, do you think he'll feel disappointed or do you think he's one of these players that uh, has it in his head that he needs to leave Villa Is I he... think he'd quite happily stay probably I think he's made his own bed do you think maybe he... I think Bruce is maybe we don't know what goes on behind the behind the scenes but there's something funny going on isn't there there's something fishy somewhere so why do you think he'd be happy to stay just for the money pick up the money I don't I I I would hope that players aren't motivated, but especially strikers who love to score goals and they love being on the pitch. And I don't know, Ross McCormick, as you say, we don't know what's going on behind There's the pitch. There's something going on there. Yeah, totally. And I would say that he was the opposite. I would think that he's now looking to the door and hoping to get a chance somewhere else, especially in the Championship, especially against a potential contender where he could derail Villa's campaign if he got the chance. I really think Sunderland are going to struggle. And I've got a lot of time for Simon Grayson. Their manager, obviously a former Villa player, has done wonders at Preston, did a good job at Leeds as well when he was there. But I just I think they're going to be, this season, the Villa of last season. I think they're really going to struggle. Do you think they're going to... Uh, yeah, I, no, I, I took a bit of money at it, but I think there's just there's a lot of work to do behind the scenes there. They're a broken club like Villa were, yeah. and they haven't got a new owner to come in and repair things. I was going to say there's that, a lot of problems at Sunderland. I think they're in a worse po- position than, than Villa are, or Villa were, sorry. Um, and yeah, they they could struggle. You're right. Spats a bit of desperation as well, doesn't it? Getting in McCormack really because he's there's a problem. There is a clear problem somewhere. But I it's think a very ris- big risk for Sunderland. Uh, Grayson obviously worked with McCormack uh, before at Leeds, yeah. so there there must be a relationship there. That again, the antithesis of um, you, you've got the Bruce McCormack relationship that doesn't work. Grayson obviously thinks he can get the best out of this player, um, so it'll be interesting to see if he does go. If he's got a disjointed side around him. McCormack, like he did last season, which I probably think he would have at Sunderland. He won't score goals because he won't get the service. Mm-hmm. I mean, at times, actually, I did think... He, I think there is a good footballer there. I, to no be doubt. honest, he's a good player. He's a clever player. Mm-hmm. At, at times, we weren't on the same wavelength. I don't think he fitted into any of the formations we were trying to play, but I think he'll run into the same problems at Sunderland. I really do. I think they'll be a mess this season. Q... 12 minutes time when Sunderland have won the league now. Yeah. yeah and knocked us out of the playoffs yeah. or something like that um, let's talk briefly about a couple of a couple of transfers in a couple of transfers out um, uh, Jordan Vertu has gone on his way he's uh, heading to Fiorentina in Italy 24 year old got relegated with Villa was on loan all last year at St Etienne it looked like he might end up there uh, on a permanent basis but I think his head was turned by Fiorentina 
and uh, and and why not? Fair play. Uh, only twenty four. Could still could still kind of turn around. He was a bright young thing when he turned up at Villa, and it just yeah. hasn't worked out for him. I mean, Fiorentina must be looking forward to that mouth watering midfield partnership of Veritu and Sanchez that worked so well for Villa in their last Premier League season. I'd have kept him about if we did get a decent fee for him, but I believe we've got a good fee for him, which is fair in today's market. So to let him go, I've not got a problem with that. And I actually really, really like the balance and makeup of our squad now. I'm really, really happy. That tweet really, really pleased me. Mm. And seeing the people that he took to Germany and the ones he left at home, I'm actually really happy with the makeup of our squad now. And I'd argue we don't really need to sign anyone else. Another... Maybe shift a couple, a couple more, maybe. Mm. I don't think we need to buy anyone now. I think the squad is set. And ready for the new season and it's good to be in that position now very interesting another one that could be on his way is Alan Hutton uh, rumours of an 800 grand bid from Sheffield Wednesday um, we've, we've, again, we've talked a lot about right backs and we've got we've got a host of them haven't we we've got a five a side team of right backs yeah um, so it could be another one that, that kind of is eased off the wage bid bill and, uh, and not too big a disaster the only way I see him going I mean I found it a bit strange that People were saying he's off, he's going to Sheffield Wednesday, it was all over social media, but at the time it was all over social media, he was playing yeah. for Aston Villa, so he clearly isn't imminent. Um, the only way I see him going is if Sheffield Wednesday offer him a two, three-year deal and he gets offered a bit more money. More money? A bit more money than what he's on at Villa. I don't see... I don't think he wants to leave. I think he's quite happy at Villa, and why wouldn't he be when you've got the fans singing your name every week, cheering everything you do, even when you do something wrong, which is the way it is with Hutton. And he's finally won me over a little bit. It's not, not the time for well, him to that, go. It's not the time for him to go, really, is it? If Dan Bardell likes you, why would you ever leave? Isn't it more about if if Bruce has said to him, look, you're going to have to battle for a place. You're not going to be automatic first choice right back. We've had a bid for you. We're going to accept it. It's got to be a little bit about, well, I'm not wanted here. I, I don't feel like... I mean, Sheffield Wednesday are a playoff team. Yeah. You know, he, he could see, do you know what, this is a lateral move. I could be as good going here, playing uh, every week and, and maybe going up as well. I mean, I don't really know what the right-back situation is at Sheffield Wednesday, but I imagine they haven't got the 107 <laughs> right-backs that, that we've got. I, don't, I think he's comfortable at Villa, and I think he probably would have been allowed to go in January, and mm-hmm. Bruce was probably prepared to let him go in January because we bought him Bree. We had Bakuna, we still had Richards. And obviously, we've still got all these people. Delat was injured, but... Mm-hmm. I think Hutton fancies himself to see these people off. He, he loves the challenge, and he's seen so many right backs off now that if he stays, it wouldn't surprise wouldn't surprise me at all. Oh, I don't disagree with that. I just think uh, it, it again comes down to a probably a personal conversation between himself and Bruce, and and seeing the direction of the club and and these young players coming through. Maybe if the offer is right, like you say, the money's right and that kind of thing, the years, then then we might see it. Um, since our last podcast, there's been a couple of couple of signings yeah. and a couple of Villa View videos as well, so check them out. Dan gives his opinion on El Mahadi. El Mahamadi. El Mahamadi. <laughs> wow. oh, um, you, had, you had trouble with Big Jack. Uh, Big Jake. Oh, no. Oh, no. El, El Mahadi, Tom Hardy's brother. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And, um, and Matt, obviously... Uh, looked at Glenn Whelan as well. So, um, and we've also had Chris Samba officially yeah, signing. Yeah, surprise. We weren't ready for that one. We mm. weren't prepared for that one. So that's why there was no, no video. Next time, Dan, you just let me know. Tom Julian, I'll do my, uh, I'll do my little personal video. If there's a demand for a Tom Julian video, then I'm sure we can speak to Rollo and see whether that's something that we that we can do. Please put that in the comment sections. That'd be great. Um, thoughts on those two signs? I know you've already said. Well, just just very briefly, you've said that the. The squad is a nice balance. Those two, yeah. you're ready to be won over by them. Whelan, I was happy with that. To me, that was a logical signing because when Yednak didn't play last season, we went to pieces and Whelan's obviously a steely player. Like Yednak, a bit of a better ball player than Yednak, though, but probably less less strong. I'm happy with that signing. I think that's a, that's, a, that's a good sign. I haven't actually watched the video of what Matt said, so I don't know whether he was happy Matt, with the signing. Matt, um... It's bad that I haven't watched that. It slipped my mind. It's he's uh, he's got a lovely moustache in it. Has he? He, uh, he took, there's a little outtake at the start where uh, where he talks about his shaving. I think he's trying for that. I think because uh, there's nothing here. There's only a tiny bit here, and I just think he's uh, you know maybe had a date that evening. Mate, he was obviously know. inspired by his hero Dan Bardell's moustache. Mm, we'll see. Season. What about uh, what about Samba then? Talk to me about Samba. Samba. <laughs> Look good. He looked good in pre-season, did, to yeah. be fair to him. I, did, I was having a chat with uh, my old man said on Twitter the other day, and he was sat alluding to the fact that perhaps Samba's coming, the Baker might be going, but I wouldn't be happy with that. Mm. But I think keep Baker, you've got Samba 
as well. Those two as backup for Terry and Chester. That's good backup. I'd yeah. be happy with that. Doesn't spell well. Uh, doesn't spell good things for Michael Richards, who was again injured well, about ten minutes into his game. Just looks at the football and he's injured. Isn't yeah. It? So um, yeah, it doesn't doesn't look good for him. Um, that's a that, that's it, isn't it? Al Mohamed, we didn't really. Oh yeah, on. sorry. Because he's an early contender to make me look stupid this season because he had a really good game mm-hmm. in that forty-five minutes. He showed crossing ability that I've never seen from him whenever I've watched him mm. play. And Hogan looked like he had a good uh, rapport with him on the pitch. That's good. You haven't really touched on that. The fact to see Hogan scoring twice was uh, really really nice to see. It made my notes. Yeah. But, uh, but uh, do you know what the Matt Lynch phone call threw me off, and I was uh, just sorry, like, I don't know where I, I should was. say that we didn't tell Tom that was happening. So. Yeah. That's why I don't know an awful lot about this podcast yeah, today. But turns up and does it? The notes, the, the everything. It's all, it's all been a bit of a bit of a shock for me, but yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I wrote down here. Chris Samba's got the chance to be the biggest cult hero since Marlon Harewood. You're really pushing for that Marlon Harewood yeah. uh, yeah. follow back. One day we? we'll get him on the podcast. Should we do some that's comments? Should yeah. we do some comments? Yeah, let's. We like to get the uh, the Villa View subscribers and listeners and watchers involved. So I put something out about Gabby. So Roger Wheeler says, my own opinion, Dan, and don't mean to be harsh, but it's now a boring subject and one worth no more debate, in my opinion. Clearly going nowhere, so it's probably Roger shouldn't listen to the first 15 minutes. Should have definitely skipped so. through. It's a bit late for that now. <laughs> Sorry, Roger. This podcast. All I will say is a fit enough for it, Bonner who can still make his mark at the level we're at now, just my view. Mm-hmm. I think some of the Gabby out brigade, brigade. Brigade. Forget, if he doesn't perform this season, he's gone. Contract's up at the end of the season. Not totally convinced myself, Dan, that even a decent season will prolong his stay if we do get promoted. That's fair. This is a bit of an essay from from, from Roger. He loves a tweet, Roger. Yeah. I, mean, I haven't even touched on the other two. <laughs> Three that he, that he sent after his good tweeter, Roger Wheeler, as I alluded to. And the last podcast, your Tinder says, can you still see us struggling to break teams down this season if we play five in midfield? How will Codger and Hogan fit into, fit into a system? You got any thoughts on that? I've got a few, but I'll let you go first. I mean, I wasn't listening. I'm not gonna oh, lie. I, was, right. I was about to get a different thread up. Oh, can right. you see? Yeah, us? can you get the next thread up, please? Yeah, I'll, I'll cover that. Jatinda, if Tom's not doesn't care wow. about, about your opinion, doesn't seem fair. I, it looks like we're going to line up four four one one, as we did that in both games in June. It looks like that may be how we start the season. I actually think that uh, Codger will spend some time on the wing again this season. I don't think Hogan will play every game. I think Codger will, but I think some of that time will be spent. On the wing, in my opinion, I don't think we, we shouldn't struggle to break teams down again because we have to, simply have to be more expansive. Because yeah. if we're not, as I've said, Bruce is in trouble. I don't think we will struggle. I think we've got a bit more about us this season than we had at the start of last season and, and towards the end of Bruce's first season. I think we I think we've got more about us this year. Yeah, Jack Jennings actually agrees with you, Dan, that a four four two diamond will bring the best out of Jack Grealish, um, and he also wants to sell Ross McCormack because he looks sloppy. So. All your, be very happy. All your dreams might be coming true there, Jack. Yeah. Uh, what have we got here? Which player's performance most impressed you from the tournament in Germany? I really liked Scott Hogan. I thought he was good. Um, uh, again, some of the younger lads that, that we've we've talked about, Callum Hair played really, really well. And that's that's just exciting to see. Yeah. I'm, I'm just ready for real football now, I think. Probably Samba as well, to be fair. I mean, his header was Benteke-esque. The floated corner, the powerful header, the way he rose. It was very much like watching... Benteke, probably him because it's a surprise because obviously he's been at Villa a while now mm. training and and whatnot and he's done very well to earn himself a contract obviously very hungry I think he could be a surprise package yeah, from the start got, of the season obviously got the right attitude uh, Cyberdon Blue doesn't agree with us uh, he's, he's always involved so great thank you for that and we love we love different opinions don't we yep. so uh, uh, I strongly disagree with your assessment of the Shrewsbury game that was probably me uh, it was just like watching uh, the last few games of last season abysmal it doesn't matter who the back four were they're supposed to be better quality than Shrewsbury staff I would say that the we we were all right. We were very well matched in the first sixty minutes of that game, and then us us back four were were ridiculous um, in the in the second, this or the third the third third of it. Um, <laughs> it's not American football time. <laughs> the third you've third. Lost the plot. You've what you do. Um, yeah. So I, I again I wouldn't read too much into the last bit of that game. We should be creating more chances. Um, that that much is true. Shall I do one? Yeah. Sam Young, who says, if the 15-16 relegation squad played the new 17-18 squad, who would win? Probably the 17 Oh, you'd hope so, squad. wouldn't you? Yeah. I'm pretty sure my five-a-side team would beat the 15-16 squad with just five players against 11, and we're not great. Uh, Charlie Funnel says, uh, Matt, last time I checked, melon and grape are just fruit, no uh, veg. Yeah. I remember that, that yeah. was good. Body more Heath video, so we did a bit of a behind-the-scenes video of our day 
uh, Body More Heath. I actually liked the behind the scenes video better than the actual football one. I thought it was a bit more interesting, maybe for people to watch. I said that to you yeah. as well, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. That, I thought that was fun. And uh, yeah, the the fruit and veg reference is uh, is very funny. And Matt's car is also very funny. Yeah, a couple of tweets on Matt's car. Seeing Matt's car rolling was brilliant. Those car seats are disgraceful <laughs> from Max, fair. Max Stokes. It's fair, and watching the little in between us car running was very, very amusing. We've got uh, Ginger Luke, Luke O'Dell. What's Dan and Tom's favourite pre match meal and drink before watching a game? Bovril. It's got to be Bovril in I, the winter. Oh, no. You're not a Bovril man? No, not at all. Uh, I do like a pie, though. We've talked about pies before. I'm the pie connoisseur. Yeah, right. um, self entitled. <laughs> yeah, very much so. Uh, for, a, for a bit, I'd probably have a beer, to be honest. I don't, I, uh, just one. One would be nice. But, um, yeah, Chris Dolan's asked us where do we got where do we want to go for dinner on Thursday because we're actually going out with friend of the Villa View, Chris Dolan on Thursday as we're all based in London, bit of a Villa healthy night out because um, Dolan's off the beers. If anyone's got any suggestions of anywhere nice to go in Putney, that would be appreciated. I've got some ideas. In the comments. I know where I'm going. Yeah, we'll go with. We don't want to go for a pie, Tom. Very, <laughs> very nice. Diet. Very nice of Chris Dolan to offer to pay for everybody oh, as well. So generous. He's a generous guy. Thanks very much for that, Chris. Really appreciate it. Uh, what else we got here? I keep uh... a lot of the stuff we have covered of the questions as is always the way so John Martin said about the blend of youth and experience we've covered that I think yeah I'm really really happy as you can probably tell uh, about that Rex Colt makes a bit of a reference to your uh, Hollywood shades that you were wearing in the uh, Body More Heath video oh, hung over shade I was hung over <laughs> Um, best preparation for a day of five side to be fair a few people mentioning how many right backs we've got uh, we talked a little bit about that about how that might change fairly soon um, yeah yeah AVFC chats says Hepburn Murphy or Davis I actually think Davis is going to take us by surprise because I think quite simply he's the more Bruce like player yeah the big strong lad and he, he was good on the last day of the season. I don't want to pick uh, between the two. I want them both. I think that's uh, that's my answer. Bit of a weird one from the Sultana King here. He says, Snog, marry, avoid, Bruce, Gabby, Hutton. Oh, that I don't is, mind that. That is weird. Snog, marry, avoid. Uh, I wouldn't really want to snog any of them, if I'm being honest. I Marry Bruce. Oh, you're playing, are you? Yeah, marry, <laughs> marry Bruce, snog, Gabby, avoid, Hutton, I think. So I think I'd marry Gabby. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's probably got the most money. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, be a, I'd be a good wag. I'd be a good wag. I think that's one to end on. Uh, I like this. Sultana King never told us why he's called the Sultana King. Oh, yeah, can you let us know? Because we'd like to know. Something that. about uni, but I do want the longer story. Yeah. Got some more questions. We get to go on to, That was Twitter and YouTube covered there. We did have some stuff coming from Instagram. Oh, yeah. As well. Good job. I'm on the ball and remembering Tom. Tom I don't, thinks it's over. I don't do Instagram. Sorry. You don't do Instagram. You're on there. I barely do. Uh, what? You are on there, though, aren't you? Am I? Yes. God, how can I know you're on Instagram and you, and you not know? I think that says more about you than it is What do you me. think is, this has come from, I can't see, it's come from News Daily Villa. Hello, News Daily Villa. What do you think is the most important bit of business in this transfer window so far and what is the position we most need to improve on? I think uh, it's an obvious one for me, John Terry. Yeah. Signing John Terry is, is massive. I think he's already shown great leadership and, and no... No goals conceded yet, so that's quite nice. Yeah. Keep that going. I think the fact it was such a surprise as well, because we would have never have thought 11 weeks ago that that would have been a signing that we could make. But I think probably the most important bit for me is that we've got keeper sorted. He may not be everyone's cup of tea. I'm not 100% convinced on him myself. But getting Sam Johnson in for the season and getting that number one position sorted, I think that would be good for him. Yep. And hopefully good for Villa. I genuinely don't think we need to improve on a position at the moment. I think we're all, I think we're there. I think we're set. Where we're going to improve most on, I think, still is, is when Jonathan Codge is fit yeah. and we, we start really seeing he'll be on the, the I think he'll be on the bench first day. So do I, but I mean, the season is, is a marathon, not a sprint. Yeah. What does the... Stevie Lee. Stevie Lee, is that Steve Lee? Steve, Steve Lee, I'm going to go with. Yeah. What does, the imme- what does the immediate future hold for Baker since the signing of Chris Samba? And does this mean he is now our third choice centre-back? Again, you mentioned it, didn't you, already? Yeah. Um, I think there's, there's room in the squad for both of those. And uh, I'm quite excited. I think he was probably third choice before Samba's arrival. And I think he probably is still. Yeah. Third choice. People keep asking about the back three. I'd have thought if we were going to line up with a back three this season that we would have seen it at some point in pre-season. It would be hugely bizarre if having not used it all pre-season, we suddenly did it on the game one against Hull. That would be very worrying. The only thing I would say about that is if Steve Bruce suddenly decides that Amavi is the answer at left back or left wing back, then you might be more inclined to see that. Why? Because why? Why? Taylor at 
left. Would you have Taylor at left centre back? Well, you might not play like Taylor. That? that would be the Taylor swap for me. For me, I think if you put my Bruce head on. I think Taylor's probably one of the first names on the two. So. If I put my Bruce head on, and I'm I'm married to the guy now, I yeah. think you'll you'll remember. Then then a back four seems most sensible. He'd have tried it at some point for yeah. sure, but he's a formation he's used before. But it never seems to work very well for Villa when we always seem to go to it in a flurry of panic when we're on a bad run. Whereas in the olden days, Brian Little, John Gregory, that was our formation of choice. Mm. And that was good days, heady days. But now we seem to go there. Oh, we like. Oh, we've lost a few games. What do we do? Well, wow, we're going to panic and go to a back three, and it never works. Can you believe we've uh, we've been in here forty five minutes? Yeah, it's been a good good half. Good half. I'm yeah. pleased, pleased with the 45 minutes of a oh, podcast that we've done, actually. Nice. Yeah, that was a good one. So usually, I, usually I come off and I'm quite unhappy with it. Yeah. I usually think we could have done better. So probably this way, when I'm quite content, it's probably going to be the worst one, the worst received podcast. Well, we'd like you to tell us what you think about them. As always, uh, leave your iTunes reviews. Um, I think Dan Rollinson is going to make a little uh, iTunes review. Um, yeah. We've got some videos uh, coming up, I'm sure. Yeah, it's, we should say probably that we are, we've are. we been a bit... Not lax, but at times there's not been a lot to talk about. So we've used the podcast to tide Villa fans over. Mm. In the summer, we will obviously continue with the podcast forever. Now, whether Tom's here all the time, we do not know yet. But hopefully, you'll stay on. Well, thank you very much. Who, right. who decides that? Oh well, do you have we some make sort of a lot of, We make a lot of decisions without you. Yeah, as you've as you've seen, Matt was to move to London. You'd be in trouble, for example. One week, I'll, I'll come up here, and my security pass just just won't work. Yeah. But we're we're going to hit the ground running again. From next week, we're going to get videos out, all the usual stuff before games, obviously fan cams, after games, we're going to hit the ground. Running against, really pleased, really pleased to get back on it. I think I'll be pleased to get back on it. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's exciting. I tell you, if you, uh, <laughs> if you, if you could sign anybody in, uh, in this chair, who would it be? Who would you, who would you sign? Probably Dr. Toner. Dr. Tony, yeah. Big Keith. I was going to say someone, Get someone higher. If you had a chance, what, what would you even ask Keith Wines? Or Dr. Tony? Obviously, I've spoken to Dr. Tony on a fairly regular basis. Uh, if I speak to Keith Winers, I'd ask him why he follows Matt Lynch on Twitter and <laughs> and not me. <laughs> they that's baffling. That's very that fair. baffling. Oh, there's a few people that follow Matt over you, though, isn't there? You've just made that up. You've got no proof. He's got more followers than you, hasn't oh, he's he? He's got a lot more followers than me. Well, that's exactly what I just I said. I think we all know what someone's been spending their student loan money on. <laughs> <laughs> very good. If, very you, good. if you could ask Keith Winers or Dr. Tony a question, then let us know in the comments below what, what you'd ask them. It'd be interesting. Absolutely. People said, yeah. yeah, yeah, please do. And yeah, keep keep the comments, keep the reviews coming in. Um that'd be great. And as ever, we love we love chatting villa and, and we're not yeah. too far from the real season. So uh good times. Stay with us and uh and yeah, thank you very much for subscribing, post notifications on. Yeah, you know the jazz, you know the drill now. Really Apologies do. if we have missed your question or we covered your question before we got to the questions as we usually do. One of these days we'll just have a Q and A yeah. podcast. I think maybe then an international break. Mm. That might be something. That, that we can do maybe when I'm on holiday just people ask you questions and you can talk about anything but football oh that'd be Your great strong suit some pies maybe yeah, pie yeah. chat right, right come on let's get yeah, out of here let's go thank you very much for watching of the villa of the villa if you enjoyed that video why not watch another click the video choices on screen now to go and watch them in full be sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking our logo there on the left easy peasy <laughs>